What's up, heavy hitters? We're back with the How To series. Um, we've already covered two of the main compound movements. First, we covered deadlift, then we covered bench, and now you know what's coming next, the squat. Um, this is probably the most, in my mind, uh, the most technical lift of all three. It's the most, to me, the most taxing. It's the one that you need the most mind to body uh, thinking, like mind to muscle. Um, it's also the most nerve wracking to me. Everything, man. This lift is the hardest lift for me. And it, it takes a lot of time to you know, get good form and create uh, a routine. And just a lot of thinking uh, is involved to become a good a good squatter. I was never that great, but because I kind of just had raw strength, I developed strength and power over time and, uh, you know, uh, tweaked my technique over and over. And uh, now, you know, I became a decent squatter. So, uh, decent squatter. 900 pounds, that's <laughs> yeah. decent now, I guess. But, um, yeah, so, you know, as usual, we're gonna take you through both of our techniques, how, how I learned, um, and the knowledge I know, and then, of course, Stoffel's gonna take you through his knowledge. Yeah, with the, with the, like, like what he said with the deadlifts, or like, if I say deadlifts, I think that uh, squats is the highest amount of stress-wise, because if you fail a deadlift, you know, you kinda just don't get off the floor. If you fail a squat, I've seen people be crumbled, knees getting torn up, um, he had to dump 900 pounds a few times, and then that, at that point, it gets really scary and, and stressful. Um, so if you're not tuned in technically and uh, mentally, it can, it can really kill you, especially when you have 900 pounds on your back. So uh, really, really pay attention to these uh, technique cues that keep you safe, um, back, shoulder, knees wise. And I'm, uh, we're gonna try and teach you as, as simple and kind of most effective as possible um, so that you can take it and apply it uh, immediately when you go to the gym. Hell yeah. Let's get it, on first. All right, heavy hitters, before we go on today's how-to, um, I wanna let you guys know that we still offering the heavy hitter program online at strengthcartel.com. Um, this program is for like an off-season strength and size. Um, Chris and I both put our heads together, taking my experience, his studying, and we created this crazy program for you guys. Well, what's the program about, Chris? So we have uh, two actually sections of the programming, the, the competition style, more intensity based, and then the heavy hitter style was more uh, intensity and volume. But there's actually four, people don't understand, there's four parts to that. So heavy hitter one to four, it's a progression uh, that's customized to your, your lifts actually. So what do you do? You give them your three compound lifts, yep. your uh, squat, bench, and deadlift. You give us your maxes. You put them through your percentages. Yep. And basically, we customize a program for you. You don't have to think. The numbers will be there day by day, exactly what you guys have to lift. There's no thinking involved, really, right? Uh, right. Just, just lifting. Um, we'll give you guys these tips on how to. And um, if you guys want to know how we program and lift, this program answers all your questions and it's everything you're gonna need and more. I'm on it, Topol's on it, and uh, Spawn's on it too. So, how, before you got on the program, how do you feel now in your lifting? Like, uh, first tell me how your body feels. Like, do you feel stronger? Well, at, at first, because I was trying other programs, like this one is specifically different. Like, it's so dummy proof. Like, it gives you the ways, the reps, how many sets and all that. Um, at first, it was hard for my body to cope with it yeah. just because I was getting slowly introduced into the powerlifting world. But then, the more I started sending videos to Big Win and Chris, the more they started critiquing form and, you know, like, they, it, it really it really helped me in my lift, finding comfort in lifting heavy. So, oh, because yeah. of that, I've been able to break some PRs and... As though he, he just got down here, you, um, what was your PR before? Because I know you just hit 585. Yeah, well, before that, it was 495. Shit, mm -hmm. and, and that's a whole nother I, wheel right there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it, it felt good too. Like there, there's that difference in lifting heavy and then lifting heavy comfortably, so. And that's not even to mention the incline. He had, he had a huge incline uh, PR. It was 340 for two. And oh shit. Like four months ago, it was only 315 for like one or. Like a half of one. Yeah, so that's <laughs> crazy. Yeah, um, so you know, there's a, there's steps and programs and, and things that you, you take if you want to get strong. You don't just go into the gym and, 
you know, automatically just get stronger, you know? There, there's steps and programs, you you know? And another thing I came to learn is, is respect what's on the program. Um, yeah. I found through trial and error by feeling that I had more to offer in the gym. Come deal load week, I'm hurting, so <laughs> so respect the, you know, they're, they're, they're customizing this to your your body and, and the numbers you're pushing, so. Hell yeah. Dope, appreciate that, Spawn. Sure. Um, so yeah, if you guys wanna learn more about it, go to strengthcartel.com. We got the programs right there, uh, fully customized be, be from uh, Topo and I. And um, hell yeah, let's get strong, baby. Sign up. Okay, first step in the setup would be getting underneath the bar. Um, I have real tight shoulders, so it, it's hard for me to get under, get under the bar and I have to warm myself up. So my setup is not really, it's gonna be hard to um, basically use my setup unless you're tight like me and it's comfortable. But my advice to you, the closer you can bring your arms, I'm gonna show you the tighter and uh, more solid your core is gonna be and the more you'll, you'll technically squat. But for me, cause I'm so tight, I'm gonna have my arms super wide and it's not the best thing, you know, for you to be strong in your core, but it's what works for me and it's basically what I have to do cause I can't get my, um, my arms in any, any further cause my shoulder mobility is so tight. So, and also um, I'm a high, uh, high bar squatter. So I'm not real low. I gotta keep the bar really high on my traps. Um, so yeah, let me take you through it. So I have my arms this wide. I have my hands this wide right here underneath the bar. Uh, so I have my, so in competition, I'll, I'll just go over this. In competition, you are not allowed to put your hands on the collars. You gotta go inside the collars right here. And for me, even this wide, I'm, I'm that tight that I can't even, get inside the collars on the first try. I gotta like warm up, warm up, and get my shoulders loose to get under. Um, I'll show you how I look and how tight I am just right off the bat. So, you know, you get under the bar. You're gonna set the bar just on a comfortable spot. I mean, I just try to get it on the most meatiest part of my traps. And, uh, you know, wh wherever it feels comfortable. And this is where my hands are placed, this far out in the beginning. Um, you know, get settled in and just get in a nice, comfortable spot. So, if you go around back, check out how uh, where it's at on the on my chops right here. Just at a nice, comfortable spot for me, and, and I'm a high bar squatter. So, um, once you get under the bar, you get the bar set at a comfortable spot on your traps. You kind of just want to squeeze your lats in the back, like keep a tight back, kind of how you're benching, I guess, and um, have a tight ass back. That's, for me, those are basically the, the three things, you know, just getting your grip in as close as you can, tightening your back up, and uh, keeping a, a strong, tight core. So, um, the top of the movement, the upper body, for me is not, I don't know, I don't, I don't have to think too much for my upper body because I'm, I'm so tight already. Like, my back is already as tight as it's gonna be. My core, I'm already tight. So I don't really think so much uh, for my upper body because I'm just kind of in place already. But for the lower body, there's a lot that goes in it for me. So, okay, I get under the bar. It's probably better if I do it without the bar so I could uh, explain it better. Um, so come over here. So I get under the bar, um, you know, you get your walkout. You wanna create a routine. You, you, if you wanna take big steps, if you're comfortable with taking big steps, you know, one, two, and then settling. If you're comfortable like that, then you should take big steps. For me, when I get heavier weight, I can't put so much weight on one leg. So I may take a few baby steps, like one, two, three, and then I get settled, you know? So once I'm settled in, however you take the bar off the rack, I, um, I'm probably a little bit outside shoulder width, a little bit outside of it. Um, so I got the bar on the back. My back's tight, my core's tight, like blowing out, like I wanna have my, my muscles, I don't know, all these oblique 
muscles right here just blowing out like like hard like um, creating a uh, I don't know what you would call it uh, what, what do they call it topo like um those um, brown things like a cylinder yeah so you want your body just like a, a cylinder you know what I mean just solid and tight pressing against your belt if you have one solid okay so those are the those are the first things back tight core solid fat you know and um, so now we're gonna talk about the descent so as we're going down for me this is what I've learned and what I played through my head um, I don't know if this is right but this is what I kind of learned and what I feel so when I'm squatting down I like to think that uh, my foot it's called rutting I know the term is called rutting because in fighting you want to do the same thing and when you hit in football kind of it's called like rutting you want to like rut your power so instead of um, thinking you're gonna squash a bug like when you hit a baseball with your hip I'm like rutting my feet out but I'm not moving my feet so if you can kind of see my leg while I'm going down I'm running it like I'm getting power going down I'm powering up and then I explode through so I'm not just like shooting my knees forward and just thinking of some weird shit like I'm fucking winding up my power like I'm running my knees outward kind of like a little out opening my hips running that shit into the ground but my feet aren't gonna move I'm running the power, winding up power, and then once I get to that point, boom, I just fucking explode through the, you know, through the ground. But, um, so, so yeah, let me, I'll take you over one more time. Um, I rack the bar, you know, get your good steps out, one, two, three, get your position, huh, deep breath, tight core, um, and then, you want to rut your feet, you know? Instead of twisting it, you're just twisting it through the uh, shoe, you know? And you're driving your knees kind of out and winding it, you know? You're not really going like this. It's just more in your feet. Um, it's kind of hard to explain when you're not in person, but uh, you could look up the term rutting. I rub my feet out, pressing kind of my knees out, staying tight, tight, tight in that, in that hole, boom. Once I get to the hole, I just explode up. I focus on using my ass and my hamstrings out the hole. And, uh, and then, yeah, um, I just explode up. So I, I don't know if that, that helped you too much. I'm not the best, I'm out of breath because I was getting into it, but uh, I hope that that helped out. I know Chris will explain way more and maybe while he's explaining, I might chip in like, oh, is that why you do this? I don't know, I might ask him a few questions because I'm not the best squatter. But uh, what I've learned, that's what worked for me and what certain people have kind of taught me and told me to critique. I probably didn't think of everything, but Chris will take it from here. All right, heavy hitters. Usually we have the slot here to demonstrate each, each lift, but uh, today we got a guest, uh, guest in here, Spawn Breezy, big time artist right here, dope ass music. Um, where are you from, Spawn? And what, what's your music about? I'm from uh, Independence, Missouri. I do island reggae music, and uh, ever since I started my fitness journey, I've always been a big fan of Strength Cartel, so Hell yeah. it's an honor to be here, yeah. Yeah, we actually Hell we yeah. actually linked up like what a year ago. Yeah. So when we linked up, he actually um, we actually became really close actually through Instagram, and then I actually took him on as an athlete, and then I realized how uh, serious he took the fitness game. It's crazy to me because I had been listening to his music since I was in college. I had a girlfriend that liked that shit, so I, I she liked them uh, hanging out and listening to Spawn Breeze. I like to get in the mood, like the candles and whatnot. <laughs> so I mean, it was really uh, actually really cool to see you know social media bring a culture together because we're both Polynesian. And then kind of just take that and kind of running with that with that movement. And we've actually had like a, a huge following. Like the Polynesian community has been so uh, supportive of us, mm. and he's been the catalyst behind all that stuff. So he's um he's actually here. He actually came and stayed with me and my family. Um, so we're actually kind of just like picking each other's brains and kind of mentoring each other in a sense of like just like the mental game. So he's here right now. We're using him as a, kind of like a dummy, not a dummy dummy, but like how what, what Sloth does. But um, he's a little bit stronger than that fool. So we've actually uh, put some weight on for him. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, so soak it in, fellas. Let's get it. So Big Boy actually said a lot of good things. Uh, and it's funny, it's actually when we start doing these videos, 
I actually started learning his like with his terminology and his thought process. It helps me become a better coach for him. Um, the way he explains stuff um, and what I told him, he thinks at such an elite level in terms of athleticism. So that when I can I can see those things. As I studied him throughout the years, it, it reassures me that I saw the right things and what he was thinking. So that, that mind to muscle to coach kind of ratio, I guess, um, it helped me become a better coach and watch him become a better athlete because of his mind process. So anytime I ever teach the squat, I actually teach from the, the top down. Um, if you think about foundational stuff, people will, will teach from the, the ground. I've seen, I see a lot of videos, people teach it from the ground first. Oh, this is how you squat, you wanna do this. Uh, I like to teach from the top because if that foundation part on the top isn't right, that whole building will crumble all the way down to the ground. And, and that's actually where that foundation actually sets because it's on the, on the shoulders. And if you don't know how to set that on your shoulders, then that's a chain reaction of it. The core's not tight the right way, the hips don't hinge the right way, the knees don't track the right way, then the feet don't actually stay balanced the right way. So actually what I'm gonna do is have Spawn actually just come in, because I want it to be as organic as possible, like when we had Spawn, or um, uh, Sloth, and I want to actually correct him as we go. Because actually he, actually he actually is one of my athletes now. So just come in and, and actually just put it on your back, and I want you to come out and just do like five reps. Okay. I'd already been working with Spawn a little bit, so he actually has really good technique to start with. But I'll just start with the actual hand placement. Um, that is the, probably the biggest misconception anytime, anytime I talk about how to teach the squat, how to keep the upper back tight. Um, people think that their hands have to be a certain way when I see people teach it. Hands have to be super tight, elbows have to be driven forward. Um, that's actually wrong. It's actually whatever the hands are doing is just a product of what the back needs to do. So the hands are just, just there um, showing you what the back needs to do. I actually came up with that term actually when I watched Big Boy squat with no hands. So, what, 675? Was it 675 for like two reps? or 685. So actually that point I saw that and I was like, man, fuck. People can squat with no hands and have that bar sit on his traps and then be able to hold a tight back and be able to squat with perfect form without his hands. Why are people making a big deal about their hands? And why, why is that such a big deal what the elbows are doing? So uh, I kind of just um, re, uh, was reverse engineered uh, how Big Boy actually squatted. And I realized that it wasn't actually important where the hands was. It was actually important what the, what the back was doing. So that's how I, that's how I learned from, from actually my hand placement. So Swan had a really good hand placement because um, it's more comfortable. But it's actually what I was looking at was how he was engaging his back. So we look at the win, um, if you guys watched any of our videos before, the, how, how Sloth was actually pinching his shoulder blades back when we talked about uh, the bench press. So that's actually something that I would, I would like to use for squat two. So thinking about putting a pencil right between that scapula and being able to actually retract it back and squeeze that. But you see how I come up like this? We don't necessarily want that as much because especially you don't want the thoracic extension from this because if I look at my body now, like we talked in deadlifts, my core just got significantly longer from that, right? So if, it's, if someone has tight shoulders and I tell them, bring your hands in, tight, 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 tight. Now drive your elbows through. If you see my core, the second I drive my elbows through, if I had tight shoulders, it elongates my core. And like I said in the deadlift, longer means weaker, shorter means stronger, shorter and wider at least. So when I talk about my hands again, it doesn't matter where I put my hands as long as I'm able to retract, squeeze, and then after that, there's a product that your hands will do. After that, that will determine how tight you are. Okay, so we'll talk about that as we go. But if you see how Big Boy said when he comes down, it, it's actually funny when I, I used to watch him squat, the bar would bend. So when he was squatting, when the weight would sit like that, and then his hands would sit on top and he would actually pull the weight down with him. And this is where actually I got this, this kind of learning tool or teaching tool. I, I teach now that when you're coming down, or is actually when you start squatting, that once you pinch your shoulders back, to actually think about bending the bar on your back. So when I bend the bar on my back, I actually naturally take my rib cage down. 
like that, right? Once I came my rib cage down, then I actually set my hips in a way that they can hinge and not rotate. So just talking about the deadlift again, like when we talked about when uh, thoracic extension, people rotate their hips. The, the biggest problem we have in commercial gyms is that you get the, the fit, the fit spoke girls that want to look like they have big butts, so they rotate back and they do this. And you'd be like, man, that's a good squat. She looked like she was sitting up right, her ass is real big right here. But I'm actually looking right here, I'm actually compressing my spine and I'm making myself weak in the core. So if I ever fail the rep, it's gonna roll like this and it's gonna usually look like you're a scared cat. Like when you go, man, like that scared cat shit. So if I look at this squat compared to this squat, like how big, that's why I was watching, is that he sits so tight like he said and he would try to keep his core so wide and so um, tight and like kind of wider to compact that when he squatted, he actually naturally released his hips. Like this, that's a much more powerful squat than this. Okay, so if you saw Spawn, when he first started squatting, he actually, first thing he did, because that's the one thing I said when he sent me a video of his squat, you have to hinge your hips back. And that becomes that there's no rotation. Okay, so go ahead and, and uh, just walk up to the bar again. And then set your hands how you set them. You want it? So just go underneath the bar and then, and then now when he comes in, he already naturally kind of does it because we've kind of worked on it, but really squeezing these shoulders back, like I'm about to put that pencil right here. So then now when you pick it up, go ahead and pick it up and walk back. So we'll just go over this first part, we won't squat yet. So right before I go, I want you to think about, so I'll show you the two differences. So push your elbows forward, like try to drive them forward. How, this is how people usually teach like Olympic weightlifting squat. So push your elbows forward like this. I try to do that. You see right when he did that, his core got longer. That's a big misconception because as I squatted in high school, college, that, and that's supposed to be an elite level, people always said terms like, chest big, big chest, drive your head forward, stuff like that. But that's all a product of trying to make my core elongate itself. So when I go, I actually don't want to think about my chest actually going up. I want to think about my chest coming down and being tight, like this. Okay, so as you, instead of actually thinking now, like pushing your elbows forward, pull the bar down and try to bend on your back. So now see, naturally he wants to bring his hands out more. So now think about bending on your back. See now his actually rib cage comes down with him and he's actually a lot tighter now. Okay, so now take another step back. So just getting out of your natural weight footing, we'll go over that too. Now try to squat five reps with the same thing. When you're coming down, try to think about bending that bar on your back as you come down. Good, you going right. So I'm already seeing just naturally, um, he didn't have a bad way of hinging his hips from the beginning, but now he's actually creating more power through that. And as Big Boy was talking about rutting, we'll go over that too. Um, there's a lot of, of misconceptions on how a squat should look and how it feels. I, I know I went over that with the deadlifts too, but it, it's a feel thing, it's a power thing. So when Big Boy was talking about rutting, he's actually thinking about balance. That's actually the biggest thing that he said in, in my mind when I was watching him do it. He's talking about balance. Balance actually creates power. So I can never be powerful if I'm not stable. So you see people actually say like rock to your heels and then they say like that so that you actually look like you're doing it. They call it a good morning. So, but I'm not stable here because now my toes are coming up and I'm doing this action and I'm actually bypassing the whole quads. That the quad is actually a stabilizer as you come down. So as I'm coming down, if I'm doing my, all my heels, and my toes are coming up like this, I might be creating power through my hips, but I'm not stabilizing the movement through my quads. Okay, so it all comes to balance. Like, I have to meet halfway. So, when, when he does hinge his hips, the actually one great thing that happens, the chain, of, chain reaction, is that my feet become balanced naturally. So this movement, if I look, if I just release my hips right here, I feel balance right in the midline of the foot, here. I thought it was funny because I have two kids now, a daughter that's a year and eight months, and then a son that's eight months. And I watch my daughter pick things up, and she'll just walk up and actually pick something up with perfect squat form. Crazy, right? I mean, Spawn has like 20 kids, so <laughs> he knows how that is. Um, but if you think about that uh, anatomically, that little babies know how to squat better than most adults do, because they're not overthinking the process that, that we've learned through the fitness game.
Okay, so the big, the, the two big things that I see big problems that my athletes have, that when they come to me, the rotation of the hips, the elbows pushing forward, and they think that that actually tightens the back, and then the, uh, actually the core itself. So I can go <laughs> two, three hours teaching the core, but we're just gonna go over the basic movements, and then, uh, so we'll just talk about now from the hips down. So once he's hinged his hips, what Big Boy actually said was perfect, what he said about the, the rutting, okay? So, in feet wise, he actually had a good, good cue, was that short, slightly outside the shoulders. This one will always differ on if you're high bar squatting, low bar squatting, or if you're just tight. A lot of people uh, have tight feet. Naturally, they don't even know they have it. Tight feet, tight um, calves, tight ankles will attribute to you either having to widen or be closer, depending on how long your legs are or whatever. Um, he's pretty, uh, like, even, like kind of, well, how, how would you say that? Kind of perfect. <laughs> yeah, perfect or uh, weak. Um, <laughs> he's kind of evenly distributed. So it can be just kind of a normal stance for him. Most a lot of people, if I, when I was, when I was going doing my kinesiology degree, they said that the best way to squat would be for your toes to be forward because that means that my calves and my ankles and all these other things are actually, um, have good flexibility. Um, that's actually the improper way in terms of creating power because I'm actually not creating power through my hips. Like I said in the deadlift, some people actually come up like this, push your knees forward, then they're bypassing all those other horizontal muscles like the abductors. Okay, so same thing with the squats. Slightly outside the shoulders. He's, I, I, I'm not even gonna touch uh, much more on the rutting part because it's actually perfect what Big Boy was saying. You have to really rut your feet in and actually create balance so you can create power. So as I hinge, that little movement should actually take care of the balance part. And as, as I hinge, I actually naturally track my knees where my toes are going. That's actually where I want to think about where my knee should go, but it should be a natural function for your body. I hear coaches, um, a lot of like only coaches say knees out. Problem with that, here, once I hinge, if I say knees out, knees out, knees out. So as you see my feet, I'm starting to rotate posteriorly, right? And that's not balance. I could, I could literally not think about my knees and just think about purely balance and hinging and I have a perfect squat without having to rotate my hips back, without doing anything. So like I said, it's a chain reaction as it comes down, okay? So the biggest points when I touch them on my hips, to my knees, to my feet, is worry about the biggest factor in my hips, which is my core. If I don't rotate, if I'm properly hinging, then that will actually chain reaction, put your knees where they should be, and then put your feet balanced as they should be. Uh, Ed Cohn was actually the, the funniest way of putting it that I actually thought it was um, the best way of learning, he actually said, just teabag. Just pretend something's right there and just teabag it. I mean, as I come down, I, I actually I will actually think about uh, hinging my hips if I think about just teabagging something right here. Put a uh, little, uh, what's it? <laughs> put sloth space right here, and I'm gonna teabag that fool's face, and then I'm actually gonna try and drop my nuts on his face, right? So this area right here actually kept me balanced. So I'm actually distributing the weight through my hamstrings, my glutes, and, and my abductors and my quads. This action right here. So I'm not reaching back with my heels. I'm not trying to push my knees forward. I'm not pushing my knees out. It's all about distributing the power like we talked about with the deadlifts. All right, so just kind of putting everything together now. Um, I'm, I'm gonna take Spawn through again. Um, his form's not gonna change a lot um, because it's those little key points that might look um, the same, but they're actually in the mind different. So now he's focused on different things that will actually create more power. Because if I watch Big Boy squat 800 pounds, it doesn't look like he's trying to be powerful because there's so much weight in his back. But in his mind, he's thinking power, he's thinking explosiveness. It's just because of the weight's on his back, he's not being as explosive as you think he was. All right? So go ahead and go through that squat again, and then try to apply as many of those things as I said as possible. And then one other key point to do when you're, when you're squatting is not to wear Dunlop shoes. <laughs> but in all seriousness, uh, the best way to squat is with something that's more hard, more flat. Um, if you have tight ankles or tight feet, an elevated heel is fine. Um, people actually think that that creates more power through, uh, pressure through the knee. It doesn't, as long as the feet are, are actually even or they're actually balanced. Okay. So we'll go through five reps again like we did before. Try to apply as much as possible. Think about sloth's face and teabagging it. <laughs> Good. 
So you hear a little uh, uh, Rice Krispies snap crackle and pop on his knees. It's because he's an old man now. <laughs> but the one thing that I want to focus on, um, so a lot of people don't hit depth. Um, and I'll tell you right now that's a lot of it is because of the rotation of the hips. The anterior pelvic tilt actually tightens the hips and that causes the depth to kind of shorten itself. So if you look at me squatting right here, if I were to rotate my hips back like this, I can already feel a tightness in my hips and it's actually, it's actually engaging my hamstrings a lot earlier than it should. And now I'm actually reaching for depth and I actually feel a lot more pressure everywhere. Okay? So if I actually think about not actually rotating my hips and I just hinge back, I don't feel that tension. And it actually naturally, like if my, my daughter's squatting, it's naturally putting me in the hole to create power. And then, so when you watch Spawn squat, he actually is naturally doing, it. like, if I watch Big Boy squat, he was never taught to rotate his hips. So when he actually went to go squat, he didn't do that. Um, he was in college, so when, the, when that, that big fitness game was talking about the, the hips rotation, I grew up in that. So I saw the people rotating their hips. I actually did it myself. If you actually look at, we play, our, we play videos on our TV in our gym, you could watch us when we were squatting two years, uh, two years ago, and you could see me rotate my hips. You could see Bruce rotate his hips. It's because we weren't on game yet to get to that elite level of squatting. That actually, for Big Boy, brought him from 700. I watched him do it from 700, 800 to 900. So when we did our last like U.S. Open, and that that hip deal, man, that's 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 a game changer, especially for myself because pretty much how he was saying like that's a habit of mine, just because naturally I, I felt that that was what everyone else was doing and that was like the proper form of squat until he explained to me and just how he just said by throwing your hips back. You're, you're feeling that it's natural for you to wind back on your heels, right. which isn't right. Yeah. So I'm giving it the same time. Yeah. The biggest thing too is that, like I said, with the feel to what it looks like, you're gonna look at me and be like, well, his chest is dropping a little bit. So if I'm coming down like this, you're thinking to yourself, I feel vulnerable because my chest is slightly dropping. You're actually creating power. Like when, when Big Boy said he's winding up to create that power, I'm actually winding up right here to create power through my hips as if I were to jump, or if I was a linebacker about to hit somebody, I hinge through my hip to explode through my hips that way. I don't actually rotate to do it like that. I mean, it just sounds silly as doing it that way, but nobody ever applies it that way. So, as seeing that Spawn had already, already like kind of adjusted to what I coached him before, even just the little things like the hands, the pulling it down, it actually made a huge difference for him. Bar path is everything when it comes to squatting. So, my advice, if you're actually just starting out to squat, Listen to your body, like we've said with anything else, bench press, deadlift, anything like that. The, the, the high bar squatters usually have shorter quads. It was, it's able for him, for a big boy to keep an upright position. Low bar squatters usually have longer quads, so they're, they kind of bend over a little bit more as they go down. That's actually their way of creating power. Man. Hey, I was gonna chip something in. I don't know if this is right, but um, to keep your ass from poking out, you know, like the Instagram squatter type thing you were talking about, um, someone once told me this, I forgot where I got it from, but to squeeze your butt cheeks, right? When you have your core tight, to kind of squeeze like automatically, you know, if you have it out, if you squeeze your butt cheeks together, yeah. it automatically throws your, your pelvis forward, I think, yeah. right? It actually, um, uh, it actually sets your hips. Okay. So if I squeeze my butt cheeks, it actually set my hips in a neutral position, so the second I release them, it's actually getting a good position. So that's a good way of saying it. Yeah, that's, that's what I do. I, I guess I naturally um, did it because I try to keep every, every lift um, to the deadlift, to the bench, I don't let um, any part of my body be, be loose, you know? I know when you're uh, fighting, you want to breathe out, you want to be loose so you're not uh, absorbing, I guess, a big impact or whatever. But for a lift, um, I keep every, it's crazy, I don't even, I just think in my body like, I want everything in my damn body tight. I don't know if that's correct or not, but I don't let nothing loose. Like I don't just loose, this is loose, this is, you know, like a all fucking loose. Everything's tight, like my back's fucking tight, my quads are tight, my ass is tight, my back is tight. Everything's tight in my whole body. And when I go down, everything's fucking tight, you know? I'm not just going into something loose, like, Okay, I'm loose and I'm just gonna, uh. no, all this shit's fucking tight. My ass is fucking tight. My quads are tight. Everything's tight. So when I'm fucking going down, I'm winding that shit up tight. Winding up tight, 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 and exploding. So I don't know if you wanna keep your body 
no, that I, tight. Yeah, you do. But um, like I talked about the foundational part when it's sitting on your shoulders, it's different. I mean, if in my deadlift, like we talked about the, the actual traps being loose, that's to create leverage. Yeah, There's yeah, no yeah. leveraging now. Like the only leveraging is your hips to create power. So you actually want everything to be tight. That's probably the biggest tool that you don't learn as a beginner. Cause you're like, oh, I'm gonna do my elbows this way. I'm gonna do like this. I'm just squatting. But then to get to that elite level, there's a there's an activation that goes in your mind that it has to activate at the highest level possible to squeeze and tight. And that's funny cause I watch him. It looks like you're actually gonna explode your head like a red tomato when you're squatting. You're like, because that's, that's the tightness that you need to be at an elite level or, or actually maximize your body's potential of power. Cool, yeah, a little thing chipped in. So make sure, yeah, try to tighten the butt cheeks in to get in the right position and just keep your body tight, you know? Um, yeah, keep, keep your body tight. I mean, don't go overboard. I, I, sometimes even myself, I was talking about this earlier, I can get too tight and um, I have too much pressure or whatever. But you gotta find that, um, you know, middle, middle comfort. Keep it tight, but um, still not, still loose enough to be able to actually move and shit too, you know? So there's, there's you're gonna have to figure that out on your own. We can't teach that. It's gonna be something that um, is gonna be hands-on and you going through trial and error with how tight you want your body and how much pressure you, you carry throughout your body. But for me, I like to be, exaggerated tight then then loosen and, and hurt something you know so once you loosen one thing I mean you gotta this is how I think man you you going down and you loosen up one bit you loosen this quad before this quad this motherfuckers loose blowing out and this one's tight you know or you know you're loosening one butt cheek before the other or, or whatever one muscle goes loose and one muscles tight that loose muscles gonna blow out so you got to activate it all as one. Keep everything solid and tight and um, have everything working as one. So you're going to have to go through and figure out what that is for you. But um, but yeah, just, just make sure you're keeping that whole body, everything solid. I think what he's saying is like the, the most beneficial thing that you'll find in this video is actually the mind process of an elite athlete. What he thinks when he's doing elite things. So that elite mind process is actually what got him to that level. Yeah, I mean, he was gifted with so many, uh, with, with strength, but that elite mind process is actually what got him to that level. He could have easily stopped at 500 or 600, but because of how his tightness was or how he looked at things, that's actually what propelled him to that level. Um, and what he's saying with the, the core and all the things like that is 100% correct. I'll, I'll try to make it as simple as possible. If you would just look at your core, and then watch your core. If I were to zoom in on my athletes, this is actually what I do when I look at videos when I'm doing technique analysis. When I zoom in on someone's, like I don't even look at anything else, I just zoom in on just the core itself and I look at their belt. At the bottom of their belt, I look to see if it drops back or if it stays the same when they're squatting. Because then I can see if they're actually engaging their core in the proper way or they're actually releasing it. So like I said, it's a chain reaction. If you just worry about the core and then take care of the hands like we said and then actually get the tightness in the back, this will all will take care of itself. Just, and you'll see, and the people that are having trouble hitting depth, once you are able to release your hip in a way that you're hinging, opposed to rotating, you'll be mind blown. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Um, I hopefully, hopefully you guys caught this. Um, I know it could be overwhelming, yeah. so much knowledge and we're, we're both speaking maybe different languages. He teaches one way. I'm just kind of speaking on how I feel. I don't know the terminology, but um, I hope you got something through it. I, I don't know, Spawn, tell, tell us like what you kind of learned through your perspective. You know, we got Chris, we got mine. Tell us what, what you got like from start to finish. And I, I learned a lot of valuable information, especially just being a part of this video, this session right here. Yeah. Tell just us what like you kind of like took from it. Like if you were a lot. to go squat right now, like what, what were the key points? Um, what I just learned today was the importance of the, uh, what is that again? Rooting. Rooting. The, yeah, the rutting in your foot. And then as well as bending the bar. Like I've heard that terminology in benching, like somewhat you want to mm -hmm. try to bend the bar, but then in this, I find it to be more, like more effective yeah. in your lift. Because at the same time, when you're mentally building it, you're also building momentum to, to explode mm -hmm. in that yeah. particular lift, so, yeah. Just one point is that, uh that it's never done, the, the work is never done, you can always get better. I actually just applied this to Pitbull's, Pitbull's squat. So if you actually look at when Pitbull was squatting, very upright, um, 
some some coaches might be like, wow, that's perfect. Like he he's so upright that he, he's protecting himself, and actually he's, he hindered himself so much from creating power through his hips. And that's one thing that we've actually gone to the drawing board back and then actually teaching him how to hinge and create power through his hips. And that's when he started hitting the 600 pound squat beltless. It's well, I know, like to chip in, um, obviously, you know, Pitt's been riding with me so long. So I, I don't really know the squat game. And to be honest, I don't know. He knows, obviously, how I lift them, but I don't know if he respects my opinion because I'm not a coach, you know? I'm not a coach. And. Um, the coaches that we had, they are, they were very knowledgeable and they've had so many great athletes and they were great squatters, but I could see every time and I've told him, but I don't know if he took it to heart, but the main thing I saw from the gate and what he did and, um, now what didn't happen as much, but every time he went down, I don't know, tell me what this is. Every time he went down, I'd always see him go like this. His, he'd always go like this, underneath the bar. Like his, it would shoot forward somehow. I, I don't know why, like he lose balance going down. And um, for me, I, I don't know. I, uh, yeah, I don't know what it was, but. A lot of that was because that he didn't know how to hinge his hips. So like when he got to this position, his Maybe body, it was a... Because if I'm sitting like this, and I'm so tight that I, at one point, I get to a point I'm, I can't move anymore. So he yeah. would just release. Yeah, and then that would he happen, would, right? Yeah. So now that I have, he's he actually like coming forward. back. Yeah. yeah, I remember he'd go forward or back. I don't know what it was, but uh, I would see it and I would tell him that, but I didn't really know how yeah, to like, count it, you know? Yeah. But visually, I knew that wasn't right because, yeah. yeah, it would always be forward or he'd shoot back. It'd be something like that. Yeah. And um, so that's a testament, like, say, like, you don't need education to know how to analyze something. Um, someone as elite as Pitbull still has something to work on. Um, that's just just the, the name of the game. Um, so if you think that you know, you probably fucking don't. Uh, just keep working on your on your craft, trusting your body. Uh, try to wear those about those those key points that we talked about. That's at least what got us to our level and and the, the mind process that Big Boy actually got him to be the top in the world. Um, that shit doesn't happen by accident. Yeah. Um, something that I want to chip in that it doesn't really have to do with squatting, but. Being able to learn and watch like how Chris uh, said he learned from me, which I never knew um, until we started really doing these videos and things like that. But I know in football, a coach would always say like, you wanna be, I remember they'd always say, oh, you're very coachable. And I didn't really understand what it meant until like later on and stuff. But uh, you wanna be like coachable. You wanna be able to let people critique this and that, go and try it and see what works for you. You wanna be coachable. You wanna, you know, it, so it's hard. A lot of people don't, maybe it's, they're just moving with their body and they're not thinking with their mind. I think a lot of people just do that. They just move with their body, but it's mind to body. So when you get coached, whether it's in, in football, you know, um, you're gonna go through this lineman, you're a D lineman and you take this step forward and then you do some kind of hand movement. You gotta like apply that, think with your mind, not just bull rush and go straight in. You gotta, there's technique involved and same with the squat. You gotta be coachable. Mm -hmm. You have to listen, think about it in your mind before you go and do the movement. And even while you're, you're doing it in the beginning, in the beginning while you're doing this, you have to think and think and think and, and play it over, over, over in your mind it, until it becomes so natural that you don't need, even need a thing. Like for me right now, I don't even really have to think too much right before I lift. I think before a little bit and um, you know, prior to the lift, maybe the day before, whatever, if I'm gonna do a big squat or whatever I'm doing, I may think a little bit, but that day I've done it so many times in my head, I don't even think no more. I just blank out and I know my form's gonna do it because I've done it a thousand times. But you gotta make sure in the beginning, man, um, that you have that mind or body. Don't do nothing just not thinking. Think about it, you know? Activate all the muscles. Use what we taught you from experience and um, from, you know, knowledge and study. Uh, take, it, take it to heart and think with your body how your body's moving all at once. Think about it, you know? That, that's the biggest thing. Be coachable, be able to think and have your body move the same way you're thinking. That's, that's being a good lifter, a good learner, a good student, and um, taking your craft to the next level. So just a little tip right there. You probably don't even see it on the videos just because we just don't like showing that stuff. But after, when we're in prep and we're hitting it hard, um, after big squats, he'll, he'll, like, he'll come up to me and we'll, we'll analyze together. Hey, it doesn't look like you're balanced. It looks like your right foot with the big like US Open. Yeah. 
it looks like your right foot's pointing out a lot more than your left foot. Mm -hmm. Next one, try to bring that in a little bit. And for someone to be at his elite level and be able to be coachable is huge. It's massive. And I have people that aren't even close to being at the level that are a lot less coachable. So that's a huge tool for him is that, if, especially if he's saying over YouTube is be coachable, be, but understand that you have to be coachable to the right people too. So, yeah, if you don't want to listen, you're going to keep doing the wrong form over and over and over and over. And Chris said this before, I don't know how many times you got to do it to get it in brain and your body, um, but it's going to take a long time. And the more you do it uh, in the wrong way over and over, you're hurting yourself. So. Be coachable, learn the right movements, try it for yourself, and um, and yeah, you, you'll be way better off. Also another tool I think he, he said too is the, the repetitions in your mind. I think we should probably do a video purely just on the mindset of, on how to approach a big lift. I think that'd probably be a really good video. That'd be dope. Um, but what, as he said, like the repetition in his mind, I do the same exact thing. I think all elite athletes at some point have uh, visualization is actually the biggest tool in being successful. I, I record in my mind a hundred times, I try to count it almost, watching me be successful at something, doing it the right way the night before so that when I come and do it in person, it's actually the 101th time I've done it. Um, so you don't have to think as much and you don't have to be as nervous and you don't have to change your form because of it. Yeah, 100% because it's it'll almost work against you once you um, are coming for that big PR and um, sometimes you drill it over and over and over. And I tell Chris this all the time. Uh, I know like he knows, but um, I don't know. I, I don't know what it is because he has he has such great form, but I don't know if his nerves. I don't know what it is. But a lot of times I've told him this about you know a good a good uh, at least on one hand you know at least five times that he gets out of position on today actually yeah exactly. a lot of times on deadlifts I think on deadlifts he does it he gets so amped up and um, he gets out of position I see it on straight bar I see it on trap bar uh, he rushes it. And that's something that I, I preach. I, I like hardly ever break form. I don't let my mind overthink. And maybe that's something that Chris, cause he's so smart and um, he knows a te technique so much that he drills it so much even before the bar where myself, I just let my instincts take over. I don't think about shit anymore. If I was, um, I think I would screw up more. But he, he knows, he's done this shit a thousand times. He has great form but I think he lets his nerves and he overthinks. So once you get to that level, don't overthink it too. You know, it, I know we're kind of contradicting, but uh, when you come to that big lift, you know, you shouldn't even really be maxing out until you've freaking yeah. done, uh, done it a million times. So when you get to that point and you are maxing out, uh, you know, try not to overthink it. And I think that's something that Chris does do often. And uh, a lot of people make that mistake, just don't overthink it, you know? Uh, uh, trust, we're, trust your instinct. We, obviously, point. you've seen our videos. We do like a lot of, of bigger lifting with bigger people, and actually, at those times, he knows that. So, I mean, I might coach him, but he coaches me too. Like it's a, like we all coach each other. So when, when in those moments of high anxiety, he's told me, "Take your time, Chris. Like, don't mm -hmm. fucking rush because of them." And those are those times that I actually learn, and I actually, you know, peep game like that. Hey, that's that's something I should take from him. And actually, that's back when. I maybe had been just deadlifting like 700 pounds and just applying that small little tool actually, you know, projected me to 800. So, I mean, listen, always listen to people who are, are more successful than you, even if you're in the books, you're reading all those things because they don't make books about what he's saying. You know what I mean? They, that's not in a book. I didn't read that in a textbook. So make sure you're watching those people. Like we said in other videos, watch the people that are doing it the right way and they're being successful while they're doing it. Well, yeah. All right, heavy hitters. Well, Appreciate you guys, you know, listening to us talk for probably, I don't know how long, like about an hour or something. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate it. I hope it, it helps and we spit enough knowledge to you on the squats and just in general on, on lifting. Um, yeah, let us know what you guys want to hear next. Uh, there's tons of lifts that we can go over um, that Chris knows, I know, and shit, we're going to just be spitting knowledge to give back and, uh, you know, give back for everyone that supports us all the time. Uh, knowledge is power and shit, you gotta learn. Uh, appreciate Spawn coming through. Dope. Uh, you know, he, he's uh, got great form from what I've seen. I, I haven't really seen him squatting. He has good form, so, you know, Coach Topo did his, did his thing. 
And um, you know, I think it's crazy. I pretty much how you guys are saying, like you're a product of your environment. Yeah, yeah, Man, yeah. Both times I've been with with Strength Cartel, I broke both PRs. You know? Hell yeah. <laughs> Touch on one thing too is that we've been, like I said, we like uh, we've been bouncing things off mentally, and for him to be such a high success in the music industry and us kind of doing our thing in the fitness industry, we have a lot of common things that we talk about um, that creates a successful person or athlete. Um, I think that that was the thing that like kind of tripped me out the most is that he's talking about things that I've I've talked to Big Boy about about lifting maybe the patience or or you know not overthinking things and he's saying stuff like that about singing or his career and stuff like that and it just all comes together it's all a big circle and if whatever you're doing in your life if if you're going to school or you're you're creating a career these are things these are core things that you can apply to anything mental game wise that you can make you successful in anything obviously like this is the key point right here spawn had just started really getting into his fitness game and he's already thinking like that's why he's so successful already I think, yeah. I think so. big boy closing it out i think for all the heavy hitters tuning in yo really soak this game up because this is a oh, lot yeah. of valuable information they're giving it to you um, pretty much how they say connecting the the mind and your body that's exactly what the strength cartel shoes about so oh yeah if you're in the orange county area yo come through Hell yeah, appreciate that. Sure. Cool. Appreciate the love, heavy hitters, the support. Uh, comment what you guys want to see next. And uh, hope this shit helped out. Keep banging.